Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So Candace Owens is leaving the Daily Wire. We haven't had confirmation whether or not this is a mutual parting, whether or not she was fired. But this is all coming after months of feuding with Ben Shapiro, another contributor to the Daily Wire, over the Israeli response to the October 7th attack and their attacks on Gaza. Candace's position on the Israeli war in Gaza is that the response is too heavy handed that there have been too many civilian casualties and especially too many children casualties to really be justified by the attacks of October 7th. And of course, Ben Shapiro, um, a couple of other Jewish leaders and talking heads that she has run afoul of, like Rabbi Barkley, who she just did an interview with a couple days ago, uh, or Rabbi Shmuley, who's been attacking her for years. She's uncomfortable with the level of death and destruction among the civilian population in Gaza. and But of course, these Jewish talking heads are fully supporting Israel, saying that Israel has a right to defend itself, um, blaming Hamas for any and all deaths of children and civilians, saying that they're using them as human shields. And now I'm going to try to keep this video short, so I don't want to play clips of what Ben Shapiro said about her or get into their Twitter feud too much because I'm sure you've all already heard that. And if not, you can go find other content about that. It's pretty widely available. But I want to play a short clip from her interview with Rabbi Barkley just a couple of days ago, because I can't believe that her firing has nothing to do with this. It just seems like they're just way too close, way, way too coincidental that she would be let go or fired just two, three days after this kind of explosive interview. I believe that what happened on October 7th is a uniquely dark form of evil on a whole other level, on a whole other level in every way, shape, or form of evil than anything that is happening in Gaza. Do you agree with my statement or disagree? I don't need explanations. Do you agree with me or disagree? I'm, I'm, I, I have said to you a thousand times, I feel like what you are asking me to do right now, I'm, I'm looking at the cost of life. This is how I okay, analyze so you, things. So you can't agree. You're not going to agree with me. I am uncomfortable with the amount oh. of innocent life that is lost right now in Gaza. So you're not going to agree I am with not. Me. Okay. I am, Ray, I am, let's move on. Am, let's move on because okay. there's other stuff. Because there's there's another piece in that because article. part of it feels like you want me to weigh like is Jewish is Jewish innocent life no. worth more than no. Palestinian innocent life? And I'm not comfortable. You've with already that. made that. You've made that clear that, that you don't view it the same, or you'd be able to say that what happened. I, I view innocent life as innocent life. Like I'm, I'm okay. saying, I, I just I, I, innocent I life loss. Now the full interview is about an hour and forty minutes, and to be honest, it is very difficult to watch. Um, Rabbi Barkley is extraordinarily difficult to listen to. He's constantly moralizing. He's constantly equivocating, um, really whining. He gets all emotional, upset. Candace, to her credit, keeps it very straight, very cool. I think that her position is pretty much consistent throughout the whole thing. They argue a lot about the war in Gaza. This clip is not the only time that this comes up. And the rabbi's main point is he wants her to admit or to say that the attacks on October 7th were the the darkest most evil thing that has ever happened um it, maybe it's not even as clear in that clip but he says even earlier in the video like this is like the most evil thing that's ever happened it is the single darkest thing that's ever happened in humanity um you know october 7th was was evil right like the intentional targeting of civilians is always a moral evil but to say that that is the most evil thing that humanity's ever done the worst things ever happened I, it's just ridiculous now, we, we don't necessarily need to compare suffering and start a whole suffering Olympics, but you know, in my personal opinion, the worst thing that humanity's ever done was dropping the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, taking one bomb and harnessing the power of the atom to erase cities with you know, hundreds of thousands of inhabitants. Yeah, it wasn't the highest casualty event in the war, and you, there's all sorts of arguments about why we needed to. I don't actually buy those as a whole other video, but you know, to erase 200,000 people, there was a, thereabouts in the matter of seconds. I mean, that's probably the worst thing humans have ever done to each other. And then there's a whole list of other horrible things that have happened. But so to say that this is the worst thing ever, it's just ridiculous. And he really hammers on this multiple times throughout the video. And she is uncomfortable with saying that. And he's, he wants her to say that there is no moral equivalency between the bombing of 
Gazan civilians and the killing of Israeli civilians, which I think is also ridiculous. I mean, the numbers are just so lopsided that it, it's, it's hard to even compare them, right? And Israel supposedly being the world's most moral army, killing tens of thousands of children and civilians is just not a good look. But there are really two main points I want to make in this video. And again, I want to keep it kind of short because I want to go to a hockey game here in a minute and I want to get this edited now by sometime tomorrow morning. This, I think, is just the beginning of the pro-Israeli and the anti-Israeli or at least skeptical of Israel right. I think that you know, Candace is now going her own way. I think she's going to take a lot of people with her. Um, she's raising questions about the morals of Israel. She's even asking questions about like, hey, there's a lot of Jewish influence in key industries like Hollywood or Congress, right? And so that gets her labeled an anti-Semite immediately. But you want to turn somebody into an anti-Semite? Then just have a bunch of Jewish rabbis and Jews come out and attack her for even asking questions of Israel. And that's, that's my main point. And I've talked about this in the past. Israel is doomed. They are not a state that is going to survive the next hundred years. Uh, they just, they're in the most hostile place on the planet to them. And because of Israel's behavior over the last 80 years, they are not going to be tolerated. That kind of heavy-handed civilian casualties is, is no longer going to be tolerated by the West. They are going to start putting restrictions on Israel. You know, Israel has lost the next generation. Gen Z, my generation, and the generations behind it, they've lost them. They are majority pro-Palestine at this point because the left has pushed this kind of Marxist theory that everything can be broken down into oppressor and oppressed. And so when you teach children for their entire life that that's really the dichotomy, that's the dialectic that you need to look at and to observe and, and to form all your conclusions from. And they've also at the same time turned Muslims into a oppressed class, right? The, the old poor Muslims, uh, you know, they talk about Islamophobia. That was a big talking point. Maybe not as much the last couple years, but in the past, right? especially in Europe. So you've got this so-called this oppressed class being oppressed by Israel, which is a Jewish state. You know, you, you then wonder, well, why are people maybe starting to turn on Jews? And the real problem is that Judaism is, is kind of unique because it is both, or really it's three things. It is a religion. There is a, like a spiritual aspect of Judaism. A lot of Jews don't follow that, but there is a religious component to it. It is a nation, right? There's the Jewish state of Israel. It is explicitly a Jewish state. It is not really even equivalent to say like, oh, the United States is a Christian country because we have a lot of Christians and, and some of our laws are sort of based on Christian morality. No, Israel is a Jewish state. They, they follow Jewish law. You know, to be a real, like, full-fledged, bona fide Israeli citizen, you really got to be Jewish. And it is also an ethnicity. Like, to be Jewish is an ethnicity. It's a culture, right? It's a history. So you tie all these things together, and that works great when you're trying to establish the Jewish state coming off of World War II, right? Because you have this amazing cover. You know, so if somebody has an issue with one aspect of, of Judaism, right, if they have a an issue with Jewish religious teaching or they have an issue with Israel specifically, you can circle the wagons, right? And you can just decry and say, this is anti-Semitism, right? To be anti-Israel is anti-Semitism because Israel is the homeland of the Jewish people, which are an oppressed people um, that were, you know, and then you can appeal to the Holocaust. And usually that gets people to, to stop. That is shut down the conversation about Israel's actions for the better part of a century. But I don't think that's going to be the case anymore. Now, I think that Israel is a liability. Israel is an albatross around the neck of the Jewish people. To defend Israel is to kind of mark yourself, right, as being unreasonable, as being supremacist, Jewish supremacist, and it's going to make you anathema to the broader leftist worldview that is taking over in this country because it is you defending an oppressor nation. It is you defending an apartheid nation. Even if you want to make all the arguments in the world that that's not what's happening, 
right? You want to say that Israel's nothing like Rhodesia, Israel's nothing like South Africa. What, what it doesn't really matter, right? Because truth does not matter when we're talking policy. What matters is what you can get people to believe. And right now, in the young generation, the belief is that Israel is an oppressor state. And so to tie your religion and your ethnicity to that state, I think it's very dangerous. And I think that Jews should probably start to cut their ties with Israel in the West if they want to secure for themselves safety and uh, being taken seriously, uh, right? Because you know, they, they keep saying anti-Semitism is on the rise. And part of that is true because there's been a lot of Muslim immigration into the West in the last decade or two. But I think that the way that these rabbis and Ben Shapiro have responded to Candace Owens over her questions about Israel, I think that just creates more anti-Semites, real bona fide, actual anti-Semites, because they say, how can these people possibly defend Israel unless they have like a supremacist streak to them, that they they believe they're better than everybody, they believe that they're better than us. You know, that's going to breed contempt. People are not going to start liking Jews just as a whole. So that is my caution to any Jewish pundits or talking heads that for some reason might be watching my channel. I think you need to start distancing yourself from Israel. I think you need to at least be holding them accountable. You should be calling for Israel to stop behaving as heavy handedly, as aggressively as they are right now. Because maybe that means that Israel can survive the next century if they're able to really mellow out and they're able to continue to have support from the West. But I think that is unlikely. I think that your best bet is probably to cut Israel loose from Judaism, try to distance yourself from that. But hey, well, you know, what do I know? That's just my opinion. I'm not Jewish. I have not a lot of stake in that game, but that is just my basic diagnosis and recommendation. So you guys can all let me know what you think in the comments. You know, what's next for Candace Owens? Do you think this is good for her? Do you think this is bad for her? Is there a chance for Israel to turn this around? Can they maintain Western support? Do you think Jewish people will ever try to hold Israel accountable? There are some groups that do, but you know, certainly that is not the mainstream position. So yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you haven't already, like and subscribe, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.